Hope everybody's having a fantastic evening or day or morning, afternoon, whenever you might watch this. I have some Topps Chrome to break. I have a big package of uh, vintage cards that are really cool from back in the game collecting. And I have this thing, which we're going to open up and see what the uh, mysterious 1987 flare card is. Uh, Troll 2 playing, one of my absolute favorite movies of all time. I don't think there's anything to not say for work that I have to hide. Except for maybe the movie itself is, is offensive to uh, your humanity. I'm not sure. So let's do these cards first, the vintage stuff. These came a few days ago. I have a bunch of mail that I'm going to open. I'm probably going to do all of it tomorrow. But my mailman left this in a weird place on my porch, so it sat out in the sun. And it looked like it was almost bulging. I don't think it, you know, it's, it's just paper. Nothing was bulging, but I got nervous and uh, wanted to open it up as soon as possible. So we'll go through some of these. There's a lot of common stuff in here, um, but there are some pretty good cards, some, some key cards, and then we'll do the extra innings, and then we'll do the Topps Chrome. I've opened three bo three blaster boxes of Topps Chrome already, because I have no self-control, and I had no luck. I like the cards a lot, but I don't like the, the hits, so uh, we'll briefly go through some of these. Um, hell is on here. I'll, a lot of these are probably going to be given to to people who uh, you know, if you like the Angels, you can have a Joe Ferguson card to help fill in team sets or, or something like that. They're all pretty much packed fresh. Uh, Dennis Martinez. I thought about putting together the Ikes. I think I've read about these guys on Wikipedia. They call them the Hammer Brothers. And terrible things. Amos Otis, what a happy man. Glenn Hoffman, uh, I love 84 Flair. Uh, it's so generic, but I think that's part of it, it, the appeal. It looks like, you know 84 Flair looks like? It looks like a, um, like a gas station sign or something. Man, that's Mike Giesler. Had the man who taught Mo Vaughn his swing. He's sweating. He's a wet boy in that picture. Dang. Uh... What was I going to say? Something about these. Oh, John Walkenfuss. Uh, these, so back in the game, these are pretty much packed fresh. He breaks sets. And um, instead of buying packs, you know, from eBay or wherever, you know, you'd spend, so like 82 tops, you're going to spend, or 80 tops, for instance. You know, you're looking for a Ricky Henderson rookie. You're going to spend like 60 to $80 on a pack that could be searched and... You know, there's no guarantee you're going to get a card out of it. So he'll sell, he'll break a set of 80 tops. Um, I don't know, it'll be like 14 cards per pack. Each pack has got a top-loaded Hall of Famer. And uh, they're like six bucks a pack. So you're guaranteed a Hall of Famer. All the cards are clean. And, you know, it's... Oh, boy. I had no idea he was in here. He, he needs a top loader as fast as I could get one. And this is for the Wrath of Kane. I know you love your, your, your filthy baseball players. Rusty Kuntz and uh, Dick Burns, Dick Lecoq, Johnny Dickshot, all those uh, amazing players. So this one's for you, buddy. My grandfather would have loved that. He was a dirty son of a bitch. Uh, Tom Underwood, Bruce Hurst, excuse my language. My father, Jeff Reardon, such a dad picture of my father, loved Jeff Reardon. Hey Google, volume at three. Whoever guesses this song, not guess, whoever can tell me what song this is, gets a prize. I will send you something if you get the song. I'm sure somebody out there knows it. 
Fernando, Bruce Hooten, Vida Blue, Dick Williams, try to go through these. I know there's some um, some good players in with the, the common stuff. Howard Johnson, Jack Morris, like Fergie Jenkins. Hey Google, volume at two. John Denny, I love this set. Swan Mookie Wilson. Rick Mann with a big thing to chew. John Mayberry, Alexander. Lonnie Smith, the uh, the very uh, generous and awesome Chris Sabo's glasses. Sent me a, a video uh, about Lonnie Smith and uh, his story, which I had no idea uh, that he what was a he plan on murdering his the manager of the was it the Cardinals or is it another I don't know who else he played for I don't remember did he play for the Royals but he was gonna murder them or something I, I have to watch the video again to Chet Lemon these cards are pretty low but Jack Clark never never cared for him he's got Rod Carew Bobby Mercer Jeff Newman Bob Welch uh, like I said, if there's anything in here you guys see, well, there's a uh, John Wathen, Tom Frank White, Bud Anderson. Uh, this one's pretty nice. The Raleigh Fingers, Palmer, Gidry. I like those. A bunch of 84 tops, which. I may keep these. I may want to put together a set of 84. I, I really like this series. I think it's... I don't know. I don't know what it is about this I like, but... What's up? Sixto Lescano. What a great... Sixto is such a badass name. Sixto Magnus. If you're named Six Magnus or... I don't know. Wolfgang's a pretty badass name. Bobby Cox is not a badass name. Jim Bibby is certainly not a badass name. Try to get the Dan Cuisenberry. Uh, part of going through these is for me because I don't remember what was in here. Eric Shaw, O Diaz, man died. Uh, I was just actually talking to uh, Chris Sabo's glasses in uh, email and. The movie Terror Vision was brought up, and every time I think of Bo Diaz, I think of the movie Terror Vision because he. When I, I remember hearing on the radio when he died, that he died something it was something related to repairing a satellite dish, and I always had this vision in my head as a kid of him falling into this like giant satellite dish and being electrocuted, uh, kind of like you know a movie size, you know something you'd see on the top of a news tower in the city. And uh, TerraVision has that tower, on, that satellite dish on the front, and I always associate that with Bo Diaz. So, we'll buy the buy. I, I'm sure everybody needed to know that. 84. This this set looks really good in the top loaded too. Rudy Law, Julio Franco. Is that a Julio Franco rookie? Nope. Bill Gullickson, Bob Stanley, that face. Ugh, just disgust. Willie McGee, I'm a big Willie McGee fan. I know it's not his rookie, but I'll definitely keep that. Bobby Mitchell, almost done with these. Hal McCray, Joey Davis. Moose Haas, that's a pretty Moose is a pretty bad nest. That's a that's a good name. Kirk Gibson. So there we go, that's a good one. Yaz, Bench, and Perry. I like Gaylord Perry. I like Gaylord Perry because he was uh he was uh shysty. He was, he was a trickster on the mound, I guess. You know. Daryl wait a whoa, 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 what is this? Let me uh adjust this Kim. We have a pre Sabo Sabo. 
Daryl Porter. I think uh, it might be on. This may be a uh, piece of the puzzle. Has there always been sable, sabos? Huh. Maybe I should check out some cave paintings and see if I can find any anything sabo-ish on those those cave paintings. Antediluvian sabo. I don't know. Put him aside. Daryl Porter. Interesting. Got a Raleigh fingers, Queensberry, and a gosset man. Mustache city over here. Queensberry looks like his breath smells like cat food. Corey Bell, George Bell, Steve Garvey. So a few more common stuff. Now we'll just go to the uh, top loaded cards, which there are some really good cards in there. And like I said, I can't recommend his channel enough. I mean, the, the dude's got like, he's doing 68 tops in packs, which they're, they're expensive. They should be 66 tops, 62 tops in great shape. But you know, 75 tops, $15 a pack. And uh, Mike Schmidt, Pete Rose. I think I, I, mean, I see that kid at the uh, Dungeons and Dragons store, bookstore uptown. Tim Wadner, Dave Stewart, not a Dave Stewart rookie, right? Yeah. Steve Crawford, Al Oliver, great, great player. Can make an argument about him getting the Hall of Fame. Craig Pryor, Williams, Bill Buckner, I'll definitely PC that. Alan Figgins. Bake McBride, is there a more fitting name in the history of baseball than Bake McBride? You know that dude is, is absolutely lit right now. Dave Smith, Randy Martz, The Whitaker, Tug McGraw, Ted Simmons, Jesse Barfield, and Jeff Heidi or Lahey, I don't know. And final pack, a stack of commons. Greg Nettles. I can never not see him as Craig Nettles. It just doesn't, Greg Nettles doesn't work. That guy looks less, oops, oh, sorry, I'm up here. Vincent Romo looks more like a guy that does wet works and paints houses and does plumbing than uh, pitches. And I'm, you know, by wet works, I mean murder people for the, the mob. Joe Morgan is a pretty good card. Max Venable, Tiffany Martinez, Tim Blackwell, Chuck Rainey, Thompson, Bump Willis, Ugh. Al Oliver, Gary, Bobby Cox, Stan Ford, uh, Rich Gedman, Hal, Dale Murphy, Hal McRae, all, all of the cards, pretty nice. Danny Darwin, Steve Rogers, Rick Sutcliffe, Ed Ott, Jim Cat, Sparky Anderson, Dave Steve, Ross Brown, Miller, uh, Dwight Evans, Preston Hanna, and Hubie Brooks. Okay, so these are all the uh, kind of common semi stars and MVP cards. There are some good ones that are top of those. And I think I got some more coming hopefully this week coming up. It's a good way to also, if you, I never was big into putting together sets, so this is a good way for me to put together some, ch some chat, some chat lemons to get together a chat lemon set. To put together a, uh, start putting together some vintage sets. So, Um, Don Sutton, got Gaylord Perry, got this nice Ricky Henderson, Tom Conroy, clean card, they're all clean cards, Andy Van Slyke, which somebody graciously did, gave to me, they didn't, they didn't want it, um, Reggie Jackson, Wade Boggs, rookie, I had just gone from Chris Weaver, and it's, uh, I'm happy to have two, you know, it's great. Jack Moore, Steve Carlton, and this is a really nice Ricky Henderson. The pink and the green is fantastic. I absolutely love Rick, I, Ricky Henderson. I've been piecing him since 
I was little, a little, a wee boy. And uh, I'm happy to have this card. It's the tiniest bit off center, but other than that, is the corners are sharp, the colors are great. Top bottom looks pretty good. Uh, yeah, nice card. Put him there. Let's see what else. Dennis Eckersley, Mr. Cheeseman, Burt Blylevin, Tim Raines, Jim Palmer, Mike Schmidt, Dave Winfield, Lee Smith, got Steve Carlin, super special, superstar special, or super special star. And a nice Yaz looking like a granddad. That's a long career, boy. And finally, we got Don Sutton, 84, Reggie Jackson, 84, Tony Perez, that's for you, Cody, Carlton Fisk. Love Fisk, I PC him whether he's on the White Sox or Red Sox, another Fisk. Burt Blylevin, dirty birdie Blylevin. I don't know why I said that. I've been thoroughly embarrassed. Uh, Nolan Ryan, Steve Carlin, Gaylord Perry. This is nice. Uh, John Jabs, I believe, sent me one of these a while back, but can't have enough Nolan Ryan cards. This Ozzy Smith, which is super clean. Uh, I love this card. Love Ozzy Smith. And a Phil Negro looking awfully menacing. So, some cool vintage stuff. Um, very happy with it. Uh, would have been happier if I hit the Tony Gwynn rookie because I don't have that or the Ryan Sandberg. But I'm still still happy. Now this, I mentioned in the free break video, which I do want to give a quick update on that. One of the guys that was in at Taco Meat, was, I spoke to through email, he doesn't collect baseball cards. He collects hockey, so he he's the guy that got the stack of all the members' choice cards. So he's like, just give them give them away. So I'm gonna break up the members' choice cards and the, the rest of his cards to to the to Dan uh, Clayton and to Chris, and uh, so you'll get some of those. And they're pretty nice. I mean, they're they're good junk wax stuff. Um, so the deal with this is. Includes a, a randomly inserted 87 flare card may include a Will Clark, Bo Jackson, Ruben Sierra rookie card plus other highly collectible 87 cards. Now you know as well as I know that the chances of this being having a Bo Jackson rookie, a Will Clark rookie, or even a Ruben Sierra rookie um, is slim to none. But we're going to find out. I want to open this carefully because I don't want to ruin the package uh, if I can. And uh, if it's a good card, maybe we'll, we'll give it away to, to somebody in there. This is going to be crud. It's, it's so brittle from sitting out in the sun. Oh, man. Okay. I don't think it's going to happen. All that happened cleanly. muscles. Ah, dang it. Maybe I can kind of save it. Alright, so that's one stack out. Fizzy 87. I see an R. Is it a Reuben? Looked like it said R, but with a sorry, P underneath it. Looked probably a pitcher. Mike Messina. Charlie Huff. I'm not a fan of these cards. Tiger Tandems. Frank Thomas, Bo Jackson. And the card is... Uh, yes. Roy Lee Jackson. Uh, if anybody wants a Roy Lee Jackson, I'm sorry. I'm not going to send it to you because it's not worth your time or mine. So, I don't know if there's any more in here. I doubt it. Who's a randomly inserted flare card? Yeah. I can see through the package that there's... 
there's no more in there. So kind of what, what is to be expected. Um, Troll 2, uh, one of my favorite movies, like I said, I probably talked about it in other videos, sorry, Rusty. You're going over here, buddy. Um, this cover here has got nothing to do with the movie, um, pretty much at all. Uh, the trolls, I guess, kind of look like that. This kid is not in it, and then they, it looks like they have a treasure troll at the bottom that they did something to uh, its eyes. But I've probably seen this movie more than any other movie except for maybe like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I think I've seen Groundhog Day a lot. I love that movie, but. Um, when I was a kid, the first night I ever stayed up all through the night, I watched a movie called Fortress, and I watched then Troll 2, or it was Troll 2, then Fortress, one or the other. And this movie scared me really bad, and it's not because it's a scary movie, it's it's not. It's, it's, so, it's so bad that I had a hard time, fig I couldn't rationalize that its existence, I guess, that... Um, it was like if a if aliens came down and thought you know they were gonna make a movie that uh, we would like like a monster movie they might make this like it seemed inhumanly bad uh, and the acting is so strange and so like I said in inhuman at, at times and uh, you know it's a terrible movie but. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of it. There's a documentary called The Best Worst Movie. And it's directed by the, uh, let's see if I can show him, Michael Stevenson, Joshua, right right there. The kid in it, he went on to direct a documentary about that, this. And it's really, really good. He also did a movie called American Scream, which he followed three families in a town called Fairhaven, which is my net down pretty much down the street from me, and uh, this these three people who are obsessed with haunted houses, and every year they have craziness of turning their homes into haunted houses, and uh, it's, it's another really good documentary. Uh, the director of this, an uh, Italian guy, I forget his name. What's his name? It says on this, directed by Drago Floyd. His name is not Drago Floyd or Drago Floyd. His name is, you know, Roberto Rossini or something like that. I can't remember. But he thinks of this, like, when, when for the documentary, when he was over in the States watching the screenings of this, and the audience is laughing at these terrible, terrible lines and acting and everything about it, he's getting upset. He's like, well, this is a movie about family, and this, and he's so serious, like, and you watch him, you think... What, what is wrong with this man? Oops. Hey, Google, volume at one. You think, what is wrong with this guy? Um, because any normal human being uh, would, would is, it's, just, it's, ins it's insanity. The, um, I always made jokes that the mother in this was, had, was throughout the shooting of the movie, had, was drinking Jack Daniels and popping pills. And uh, in the documentary, they, they find her, and I'm pretty sure she was drinking Jack Daniels and popping pills. Uh, there was something clearly uh, not not right. Um, and uh, the, the, the father in this is a dentist, a small town dentist who got this role, and it's just craziness. And these, these troll costumes have, oh, let's see if I can get, to, they'll be here in a second. The troll costumes of this have been used in so many other movies, uh, European stuff. Um, there's a third, there's a third and a fourth one. There's, my cat is going absolutely nuts on these vintage cars because he smells the, uh, the dude's cat. Ah, it's my grandma. Well, it was my grandma. Um, there's a third one called the sword, the quest for the sword of truth or something like that. And then there's a fourth one, which is actually called like Contamination Seven, and another. There's like a hundred titles for it, and um, they have nothing to do with this. It's the same way Troll Two has nothing to do with the act, the movie Troll. Um, 
with Sonny Bono and Julie Louise Dreyfus and Michael Moriarty. Mori Moriarty, um, his name, right? Should I say it? And uh, the kid in its name is Harry Potter. It happens to look like Harry Potter, if I remember. It's got little dancing mushrooms in it and all types of weird stuff. Um, so that's. If you haven't seen this and you want something really weird and, and bad to watch, check it out. So I got some Topps Chrome. Like I said I opened up three blasters of these and I like the cards. I think they look really sharp and I think they look really sharp with this their the 2019 design. Um, unfortunately, the hits in this I've seen have been, except for a couple, have been pretty bad. Altuve got one of these. Oh, Mike Trout. I have not seen this one. That's been up in that, so that's pretty good. I don't think it's a number anything, but uh, I've seen some of the Red Sox ones with like Ben and and Yastrzemski and and uh, Mookie Betts, Ted Williams. You know, Mike Trout's pretty good at baseball, so I've heard. Uh, yeah, I like the shininess of these cards. I like twinkly cards. I like the optic. Oh my God, dude! Please stop. You're gonna ruin these. Do you want to? Okay. Here, I'm going to talk. It's nice and warm in this old tube TV. There you go. Sorry about that. Better? Um, yeah, I like all the shiny stuff that comes out. The optic, prism, this. And uh, speaking of shiny, no, J.P. Crawford, that feels thick. Aaron Judge, throwback. Kyle Schwarber. Jonathan Wasaga. Wasaga. I was uh, walking I was past the TV and I saw Close Encounters of the Third Kind was on. You know, I've seen it many times. I've been watching it a while. And it was a scene where Richard Dreyfus is at the train tracks and... The UFO is there, and the, all the stuff in his truck is going up, and the camera pans to the right, and the mailboxes are going back and forth. And how wonder how just great Spielberg was in his prime, and um, don't really care for Spielberg now. Uh, the last stuff I've seen of him, I think the last thing I saw was Ready Player One, which to me, he, he called that in. That's a cool little card. Uh, but, you know, Prime Spielberg, you know, if you, depends on how you view, like, are movies supposed to tell you something, teach you something? Are they supposed to, um, or are they supposed to just be entertainment? You know, people have different views on how, what a movie means or should mean or, or their, their main reason for watching a movie. Um, because it, they mean, it means all those things. Movies can teach you and they, you know, they can just be entertainment. Um, but if, if you were to take like general audience movies and distill them into some type of living thing, Steven Spielberg might be the beating heart of that because, man, does he, he know how to do it. His stuff was like so perfect in that it just, it's, it, if someone says movie magic, it's, I think, Spielberg. Um, Cedric Mullins, Noah Syndergaard, Byron Buxton Refractor, Jose Ramirez. Um, I think of Spielberg when I think of that, that twinkly movie magic stuff and um, that, that spell that a film should have on you when you go watch it. Um, and which leads me to J.J. Abrams who, who tries so hard to, to get that and to capture it and um, I hate it. I find I think it's dishonest the way he does it. You know, the Tatis Jr. rookie. I got a couple of those out of this. Um, 
you can put as many lens flares in your movies and any in, in close-ups of kids' faces. It doesn't mean you're, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a fan of J.J. Abrams. I don't, I don't like, uh, it's the same problem I, I had with Tarantino and that they strike me as dishonest, you know? They're, they, they're too aware of what they're doing and it makes the audience become too aware of what they're doing. Corey Seeger, sorry from all these towns. Colby Allard, rookie. It's a nice looking card of the pink. Roy Polanco. Um, but yeah, man. Spielberg, Prime Spielberg was so good. And you know, he, Ready Player One, I, I assume you just phoned that in because that was, that was rough. I know some people want me to put this on the TV. Spielberg has never, but never put together a scene like that. But he wasn't bad. Um, Lewis Brinson, Adamus, Matt Chapman. This is also a great scene. Every girl in the early '90s, late '80s had to have a Garfield long sleep, long like sleepy. Uh, Garfield shirt to sleep in, or, or something that would say like "Stinky Cat" on it. Man, if I could dance like that, I wouldn't be doing YouTube Dear videos. Elliot Cooper, tomorrow morning will be your final judgment. Either me or your boys. Take it or leave it. The beautiful Holly Waits or your lovely little boys. Classy, class, class. Final pack. This is the uh, these like the sepia one. Yeah, yeah. Abrams, Tarantino. I mean, I, I've come to like Tarantino more as the years go on, but I really want to see what he does with Star Trek. But you know, I understand. You know, paying homage to the people you love, you know, if, uh, but I, I don't know. When you wear it too much on your sleeve, I, and I notice it, or somebody else notices it, the audience notices it, I don't, I don't care for it, but, um, Chris Shaw, Manny Margot, and Max Kepler. So, those are the cards, like, nice looking, um, I really like the pink on the, the, Silver the throwback is really nice. Miguel Cabrera, nice looking cards. Um, the hits I've not seen have been great, except for the one of one big meat Pete Alonzo. Uh, that I can't remember who pulled it, but that's a big card. I think it was like five or ten grand for that thing. It's ten grand seems a little bit crazy for that. Um, so yeah, that's kind of uh, that's kind of it for tonight. And then tomorrow I'll do some some. Uh, Mail. I got a ton of mail. I'm trying to uh, juice, the, uh, extract the guilt out of uh, my brain for receiving it before I do the video. And um, I don't know what I've, uh, this. Is, I really don't know what's in any of it. So except for one, I do know one. Uh, so I'm looking forward to, to open that up. And uh, I have the Fangoria cards, which I'm hoping Sunday. There's the video is going to be so long and i've been as i mentioned i i've been i got i have i think every fangory from 79 to not not present but almost present and i've been reading through them kind of preparing and it's interesting because there's a lot of great articles in there a lot of stuff i never never knew and uh you know probably never made its way to the internet um or you know to the news groups and IMDb trivia and all that type of crap, but the cool thing I, I'm finding when I'm reading those is the advertisements and how much I want to own these things. So I've been trying to find uh, the a look, and I'll so it'll be like a, a little ad in the side 
for like the ultimate guide to monster magazines and I'll go on eBay see if I can find a copy of it and some of them I am I find it and I, I probably will pick up but it is gonna be a long video and I don't know how many people are gonna be interested in me talking about whatever's on the these cards for like three hours and I'll have to break it up maybe do like a th three or five part series because it will be very rambly and uh, you know, I know the longer the videos are, the retention rate and all that type of YouTube statistics and stats that I don't know if I should even care about. I don't I don't really care about. Uh, everyone's at the National. I hope they're having a good time. It's, it's in Atlanta next year, so that may be something worth uh, driving down to Atlanta to see. Uh, I don't envy the colds and the sicknesses that everyone's going to get shaking hands because... That place has got to be. We used to go to video movie conventions, like uh, for like home video stuff, and and uh, with my father, especially in Boston, we used to have the Bayside Expo Center. So, and my dad would go to Las Vegas many times a year, where he would do his conventions and probably do horrible other things when he, you know, he was drinking. He was who knows what he's doing in Vegas, but he always came home with jewelry for my mother and toys for us or you know, the computer or you know Nintendo or like the, uh, something he always come home and uh, it was a it was kind of his penance for for whatever he did um, but the um, he'd always be sick and whenever I'd go to one of the conventions with him whether it was for videos or whatever else he was working on at the time I'd always get sick so I'm sure it was gonna have a uh, card cold if that's a thing hashtag card colds um, I was just talking with somebody um, about a breaker's mat, and it, he sent me a picture of it, uh, Chris Sabo's glasses, and uh, man, that thing looks so dope. I want it so bad, so I'm going to get a breaker's mat set up, and I'm going to get something that's higher up so I can kind of come down and there's a lot of room in this room that I'm in but this space that I'm working in is very small and uh, uh, I need to once we until I switch this area out with uh, the bat one of the back rooms up here um, it's going to be in this small space I do have another laptop here so I can stream but I'm having trouble um, getting it to recognize the the uh camera that that I was sent by Chris and uh, by, by John and uh, so I, I do want to live stream and uh, in time in time so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video um, Rusty Kuntz uh, uh, Wrath of Cain that is for you if you want it and this I don't know we'll call it proto proto porter sabo proto sabo I don't know what this is, but I think the Sable mystery just got a little, a little thicker, a little, a little more mo. That's what we say thick in Massachusetts. Now we say situations got mo, which means big, thick, meaty. Good night.